I really liked my guest before I met her. Teresa Lusk is here from McKinney, Texas, born in Dallas. Um, this is her book, her story. Good enough to be a homemaker and CEO. We're gonna find out, Teresa, and I identify just a little bit, that you really didn't wanna be a mom at home with children. I didn't. But we need to go back to where things really derailed. Um, I, I, I meant to have Jim read the opening of your book, and I will, because you talk about every little girl's dream. What is that? To be a princess. Mm -hmm. Every little girl's dream is to be loved and to be beautiful and to have a hope and a future. And as is too often the case, things came into your life very early that robbed you of that dream. Yes, I actually was the victim of sexual abuse. I uh, endured sexual molestation by three different individuals before the age of 12. Mm -hmm. So that defined my life. What, explain this for, for maybe those who don't understand, what does that do to how you see yourself and then consequently the choices you make for yourself? Well, it destroys you, it destroys you. It makes you, if you had any dreams, those dreams that we had as little girls to be a princess and to be loved, um, when that happens, it just makes you feel like you're not worthy of it anymore. The dream just is crushed and you feel like you're not worthy of it anymore, like you don't deserve the good that you once dreamed of. Mm -hmm. And you start seeking love in an unhealthy way because you're constantly told over and over again that this is the kind of love that you deserve and this is the kind of love that you should be getting. And it just, it really does destroy a little girl and what her future is supposed to be. And it's ugly love. It's it is ugly love. love. Uh, tell us what happened, what direction your, your life took very early. After several incidents, after the three incidents of the molestation, I began to behave like what I believed that I was and I ended up getting pregnant at 14. I had my first child at 14 years old. I um, married my child's father, but, um, but it was a rough journey for both of us. That marriage lasted a year. Pretty much, yeah. yes. You became very desperate. Your mom helped with the caregiving for Christian. You named yes. your son Christian. I did. Um, but you took a very self-destructive path and it bottomed out and you, you looked in a good direction. I, I, you pulled out the yellow pages. Yes. What was that about? I found myself in a desperate situation one Sunday afternoon and I was really depressed. I was anxious. I had already been making lots of bad decisions for my own life. I'd been really just doing things that, again, that were self-destructive. And, um, and I found myself just looking for some grace. I needed, I needed something to just help me to get through that day because um, it was getting hard enough that I began to think, should I take my own life? It was, it was so, so hard. And, and so I pulled out a Yellow Pages and started to look for churches to call. And I called church after church after church and, and uh, nobody would answer the phone. So I... Uh, a symptom of our modern time. <laughs> yes. And I, uh, when I couldn't find anybody to help me, I continued to seek and I eventually uh, found a magazine that um, listed people who, ha who are into dark religious practices. and The New Age. The New Age. Mm -hmm. And the woman uh, wrote an article saying, if you need emotional or, or physical healing, call on this entity. And so I called on the entity and that was the beginning of my journey with believing that I had the power within to change my life and my destiny. And, and Initially that bore some good fruit. Let's just be honest. Uh, things seemed to be better for you for a period. Yes, for a period. And that's, that's the, the key phrase there, for a period. Uh, a lot of that I think had to do with also just surrounding myself with people. Well, the thing is that once you hit rock bottom, the only way to go is up. And so you start, you, I started to surround myself with people who wanted more for their life. So, and I believe that I had a purpose or grace that was being offered to me. And so I'm following that. And you weren't alone. 
I think you hit the nail on the head when you, you said, you know, you found a community. Yes. And that's what the strength of gangs. There's a, a place to belong. You're not insulated and isolated anymore. Exactly. Exactly. When, when did that journey become dark? When I realized that um, it wasn't really changing me, it wasn't really transforming me, that it was all really um, works. It was more of, you know, do this, meditate this, and, and you know, believe in that, and, and that maybe even objects had power, you know, all of that. When, when you just start realizing, gosh, you know, this thing that I, that I put my faith in is really not taking away that deep, brokenness mm -hmm. that was there. At this point, you had a new husband. I did. <laughs> <laughs> that was one of the bright parts of this it was, chapter. It was. But he shared this concern that you had really around your parenting. Um, that was a catalyst for change. Yes. We were a young blended family. We hadn't been married that long. Um, First of all, he was an amazing man, and, and he just, he really did uh, help me see that, that there are good people out there, that, that, you know, that there is some kind of hope. Not everybody's going to treat you a certain way. And so, obviously, I married him, and, and we just started having some challenges. We were a young, blended family, so that was tough. And I had so much guilt from the parenting that I felt I did. You felt with you were son. the wrong stuff as a mother. Oh, I felt I was the worst thing that could ever happen to a child. Mm. And I did make a lot of bad choices. Uh, I'm not going to say that it was all just a feeling. I made a lot of bad choices. I wasn't there as I always needed to be for my child. And so I had that guilt with me. And as I saw my child go through challenges, it just made me really feel guilty and depressed and wonder if I was doing the right thing. I mean, I knew I had hit a point in my life where I needed to change, something needed to change. God has set eternity in our hearts. He was tugging, still tugging. This time you went to the internet. Yeah. I didn't even know you could go on the internet <laughs> and, and type in prayer requests. And how many places did you find where you could do that? Oh. I couldn't, I couldn't count them. I mean, it was, it was, it's the internet, you know, so you could just go on you there. You could send all kinds of people your prayer oh. requests. <laughs> yes. Now, one pastor responded within 15 minutes of receiving yes. your request. It was amazing. Isn't that something? And what did he do? He was very encouraging. Well, first of all, he replied, which was amazing. Well, yeah, and he yeah. was available. And then he he just was very unconditional and very concerned and you know I told him how I was struggling I told him you know the, the things that were in my heart and uh, he encouraged me and he prayed with me but then he also invited my family and I to his church and that very first Sunday you all went uh, you, you say that if you had had no legs, you would have gone forward at that altar call. The compelling was so strong. Yes, that was the very first time we visited. It was a Wednesday, but when we finally accepted the call to receive Jesus Christ as our Savior, it was it was a little while after. But like you said, I just thought if I didn't have any legs, I'm going to make it up there because I knew that God was calling me. The Holy Spirit was just letting me know it's time.